Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody morning. doing today? Morning. Welcome, welcome to another Sunday, September the 22nd, 224. As we are about to begin our service, welcome everyone in the congregation, Zoom, Facebook, and anyone that is traveling. We hope that they have a safe travel here. We will stand and we first open in a word of prayer. We'll ask our brother Irvin Peters to open us in prayer, like he always do. It's an excellent job. Yes. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We and we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Daddy, we just want to say thanks for what you have done for us. You have done great things for us. We're here. You brought us here. Thank you. For you so love that you gave. You gave of yourself. You gave Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. You exemplify yourself by what you did, by showing love. And help us, Lord, to emulate you, showing love to one another. Thank you, Lord. As we gather this morning, help us you to worship you in spirit and in truth that your name alone will be glorified in the name of Jesus. So as we sing, Lord, we sing to your glory. And whatever we do, we want to do it to your glory. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalms 12, 1, 20. We'll stand for the reading now. It's taken from Proverbs 2, verse 1 to 10. And we will read responsibly. My son, if thou wilt receive my word and hide my commandments with thee, yea, if thou Christ after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding. If thou seek as a silver, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. He led up songs. He, excuse me. He led up songs wisdom for the righteousness. He is. Buckler to them that walk uprightly. Then shalt thou understand righteous and judge and equity, yea, every good part. Knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Thank, thank you for the reading of God's word. And we will start. We will begin our service right now. And the first song we'll sing is Believe. If you believe, we want to hear your voice. Our voice isn't strong today, but we hear, so we depend on you, the congregation, to help us. How is that? Let's give ourselves a round of applause as we start. Okay. 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 
As, as, as the band strike up, I just want to introduce our musicians today. We have brother Siron Bonaire, we have Javon Smith, we have Mr. Brother Ralph, we have Angeta Troy, keyboard, we have Glenn, Brother Davis, Brother Irvin Peters and drum, we have two drummers and bass. We have two drummers today and our technical team is Brother Sam and Sister Phillips. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. So much power. Break the recover. God, we believe, break the unbreakable, God, we believe, God, we believe for it, from the impossible, we need a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe for it. We've heard that there is no way through. We heard that ties will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. We know that hope is never lost. For there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what, there is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. You 
what a way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. Move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it from the impossible. God, we are miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. Take, Take me back. Take me back there, Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back there, Lord, where I first really. Take me back. Take me back there, Lord, to the place where I Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. 
we up and ready now that we was up all right we will continue next with our woman's corner please give my wife sister Dean a, a round of applause as she come up to give the woman's corner thank you good morning church our God is a God of detail. He is a God who is very specific. This morning, I wish to share the blueprint for our house. Seven Ps in a pod. They are prayer, praise, peace, presence, power, prosperity, and portal. Prayer changes things. We should always be in an attitude of prayer. First Thessalonians 5 and 17 suggested to pray without ceasing. Colossians 4 and 2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Praise. Praise is a mighty weapon against the enemy. It confuses the enemy. In praising, you get joy. The atmosphere changes. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Peace, Matthew 5 and 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. John 14 and 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Presence. The presence of God is like a whispering wind. So let us be obedient to him. Let us honor him and let us walk in holiness. Do we need God's presence? Yes, we do. Psalms 139 and 7 says, whether I shall go from the spirit or whether I shall flee from thy presence, permeate your house with the presence of God. Power, power to overcome temptation. Love your neighbors and forgive. Second Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and love and of sound mind. It is his power that gives us victory. Prosperity, Jesus make us hold and complete. Psalms 30 and 6, and in my prosperity I said, I shall not be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thus has made the mountains to stand strong. And the final one is portal. 
it's a gateway. It's a door. Psalms 24 and 7 says, Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. It is a doorway for God's glory to come through. And finally, our house is a house of prayer. Our house is a house of praise. Our house is a house of peace. Our house is a house of presence. Our house is a house of power. Our house is a house of prosperity. And our house is a house of Poto. Seven peas in a pod. Thank you. Thank you. How much peas, she said? Okay, then we were listening. That's good. All right. Well, prayer. You want to get ready for prayer? Can, I can, you know, come and get you, but I'm inviting everybody who could walk to come up. We're going to ask our brother David to come and pray for the, everybody, regardless of what it is. I have a um, prayer list. I don't want to get in trouble and leave out anybody, but I have here brother Newton Peters, brother Mark, sister Gertrude Peters, Letishma family, you know they had a, um, a death in the family. Um, so before that, we will um, sing, Come Jesus, Come. And after that, we will have the prayer. Sister Yvonne Phillips, Sister Christopher, you could tell me, Sister Green, and pray for our church, pray for you. How was your week? How was your week last week? What type of week we looking for today? We here today. Who was here with us last year, this time that's not here? Who start the year with us and is not here today? Okay? We got to pray for everything. I don't care what nobody say. Pastor Luke, whoever the pastor is, can't change nothing. He could pray. We have to pray. With the world need prayer. If I'm lying, tell me. The world need prayer. We just look at it and see, I'm not leaving out myself. Everybody leave and where they come back to? Exactly. Because I pray. Somebody was praying for you. Somebody was praying for me. Somebody will pray for all of us here who are here. And we got to continue praying, okay? Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long. <clears throat>
Jesus comes. Just sing it softly. The come, Jesus comes. We've been waiting so long for the day. singing, come Jesus, come. If Jesus come right now, would we be ready? Hallelujah. We need you right now, Lord. So come Jesus, come. Would we be ready? Bless the Lord. Father, in moments like these, we think of your love. We think of your grace and your mercy that brought us through our situations, our heartaches, our pains. We are singing, come, Jesus, come. Are we ready for you to come, Lord? Lord, we thank you, oh God, because you're not like me or anyone else. Because we would have already come. But Father, you know the day, you know the hour, you know the minutes, you know when you're ready to come. But are we ready for you to call us one by one? Father, we give you thanks this morning because you are God and you are God alone. You're all by yourself. You think for yourself. You do everything for yourself. Man cannot be like you. Because you said to trust you. As words say, trust in the Lord with all your thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge you. And you shall direct our paths. Thank you, Lord, because you are not like us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. So we ask this morning, Lord, for mercy. Mer have mercy upon us, O oh God, because, Lord, you're still the same. You never change. So as we sing, come Jesus, come. I pray, oh God, that we are ready, oh God, for your coming this morning. We are ready, oh God, when you call us, that we are ready to come, oh God. Bless our hearts this morning as men and women, oh God, who are putting their trust in you, who are trusting you, oh God, for deliverance, who are trusting you, oh God, for salvation, who are trusting you, oh God, for healing, who are trusting you, oh God, 
for changing our lives for the better. That when you call us, oh God, that we are ready to come and be with you. You said you did not call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Help us, oh God, as you call us, that we are ready to go with you. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this congregation, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, who are not saved this morning, Lord, <laughs> that turn their hearts to you because you clear it for them. That they will trust you, put their whole heart and soul and mind, body, everything to lay down their life, lay their life into your hands. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Father, we thank you. The song said, kneel at the cross. Kneel at the cross help us oh God as we kneel at the cross that we will give up all our idols everything oh God that isn't of you oh God and put our trust in you it's not about us it's all about you Everything that we have, everything that we own, it doesn't matter. It's you. The good clothes and the house we live in and the cars we drive, it's you. Hallelujah. Father, this morning, help me, O oh God, to be an instrument, O oh God, of your peace. Help me, O oh God, to live before men that they may see, O oh God, your good works and glorify you. Help every one of us, O oh God, this morning as we sing, as we give praise and thanks to you that our lives, O oh God, will measure up to what we are singing and what we are rejoicing all about father we thank you because i am nothing we are nothing without you so father we are so god that you speak to the hearts of those who repented to you to those who call by your name and those who did not call by you, uh, who, those who are not called by your name, that we all will trust you Be because we don't know when. Some of us might think that we're going to live until the coming of the Lord. But we don't know. We don't know. So, Father, help us this morning to give up all our idols and lean to the cross of Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for your mercies towards us because of your mercies why we are not consumed why we are not gone already it's your mercy that is keeping us it's your mercy Lord that kept us from so many things all the dangers that are around us 
Father, continue to bless us, O oh God, in a mighty special way. As we sing this song. Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. Raise to his voice. Thank you, brother, my brother, for that prayer. As we continue, we will now have our announcement by our secretary, Cecil Louis Janet. Which will be followed by our welcome, brother Vincent Samuel. Good morning, church. Welcome to our church. At the count of three, we are going to repeat the 2024 mantra together. One, two, three. In God's timing, for my good, for his glory. Let us continue to remember that whatever happens, it's always for our good and for his glory in his timing. The verse of the month will be brought to us by Brother Marquise Brown. You can clap. Good morning, everyone. And the verse of the month is taken from 2 Timothy 2.15. And let's see if we remember it enough. We could go ahead and... We'll read it, um, we'll say it together. So it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Thank you, Brother Marquis. Brother Marquis is our student teacher. Well, he's a real te teacher, but here at Faith, he's the verse of the month teacher for the month of September. Faith Wesleyan Holiness Church announcements for Sunday, September 22nd, 2024 are as follows. Weekly prayer, prayers that avail it, Monday, 6 p.m. on Zoom, midweek prayer meeting and Bible study in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thursday morning, Bible study and combat training, 
10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. here in the sanctuary. The verse you just heard, study to show thyself, approve unto God. St. Thomas Virgin Islands Wesleyan Youth District meets every Friday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Meeting ID and passcode are in the WhatsApp chats. Saturday rehearsals. This Saturday, we have Faith Choir, 4 p.m. Worship ministers and musicians, you meet at 5 p.m. Sunday school. We have several Sunday school classes. On Zoom, we have Jubilee with Brother Sam Brown. Here in the sanctuary, we have First Fruits with Brother Marquise Brown. Redeem with Sister Araminta Peters and Sister Naomi Henry. Victorious with Brother Erwin Peters and Brother Seymour Benier. And Sister Stephanie Brown with the All Youth Class begin at 945 here in the sanctuary. This coming Sunday, September 29th, Sunday School Lesson, the topic will be Faith for the Journey. Lesson focus, faith alone is what God requires for anyone to be made righteous. Key verse will be taken from Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Join us in worship. Our praise and worship service is every Sunday at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary on Zoom and Facebook Live. Our important announcements. The WW Ladies in White service is this afternoon, Sunday, September 22nd, 2024, at the First Wesleyan Holiness Church at 4 p.m. The theme this year is what's in your bag, what's in your heart. Missionary Sunday service is scheduled for Sunday, September 29th, which is next Sunday. We have been collecting a missionary offering every Sunday leading up to that time. It is being done by women of faith and the men of faith as well. Sunday, October 6, 2024, the Faith Wesleyan Family Meeting at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Church membership matters. It's the roots of our community. So please, we'd like everyone to come out at 4 p.m. Sunday, October 20th, 2024, 10 a.m. in the sanctuary, our pastor's appreciation service. You can clap for that. I know it's pastor's appreciation month everywhere, but we love our pastor, Pastor Leroy Luke. So we'll be appreciating him on Sunday, October 20th at 10 a.m. The colors I was notified is shades of orange. So peach, orange, coral, etc. That's the colors for October 20th, Pastor's Appreciation. So Pastor Luke, yes, you have to wear that color as well. Just thought I would let you know that in advance. We have Sister Georgiana Richards. Congratulations to her. Her event is coming, drawing closer. She's an honoree for the Bethel Missionary Baptist Ladies Fellowship 60th Anniversary Banquet on Friday, November 15th at Victor's New Hideout at 7 p.m. Now we have lots of celebration to celebrate this coming week, so let's celebrate. Today, Sunday, September 22nd, happy birthday goes out to Ajani Phillips. Also today, Sunday, September 22nd, happy birthday goes out to Brother Sean Luke. And again today on Sunday, September 22nd, a very dear happy birthday to Sister Jacinth Bernier. <laughs> I don't know if the men were planning to, you know, do the happy birthday rendition, but we'll see. Oh, they say yes. Okay, good. Good show. On uh, Monday, September 23rd, 2024, happy birthday goes out to Brother Michael Brown. <laughs> On Tuesday, September 24th, 2024, happy 16th birthday to Franklin Weeks Jr. <laughs> On Thursday, September 26th, 2024, happy birthday goes out to Dr. Nellie Varlack. Also on Thursday, September 26, 2024, happy birthday goes out to Sister Jewel Samuel. So we're going to sing happy birthday because then we have anniversaries next. Lots of celebrations this week. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Every day of the year. May you feel Jesus there. A happy birthday. you ever had. 
That was the rendition. I was looking for the happy birthday song, you know, but okay. Anniversaries, Thursday, September 26, 2024. Happy birthday, happy anniversary to brother Trevor and sister Rosemary David. I didn't have the years, they're keeping it a secret. So I guess I'll get that after. Friday, September, how many? 33 years, congratulations. On Friday, September 27, 2024, happy anniversary goes out to Brother Ira and Yvonne Hobson. And on Saturday, September 28, 2024, happy anniversary goes out to Sister Joyce Dor Griffin and Mr. Griffin. We want to wish you all a blessed anniversary. May the love that brought you thus far continue to last you a lifetime. God bless each and every one of you and have a great week. Thank you. Good morning. We want to welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Leroy Luke, and his lovely wife, Elder. Dr. Don Pont, her husband, the, L, the local board of administration, and all of those organizations that we have here at Faith. I may sound a little sleepy this morning, eh? A little tired, but it's okay. It's all good. I've been traveling last week and this week also. Um, normally, I'm able to look out into the crowd and see who was not here last Sunday, but I was one of those that were not here last Sunday. So, um, but I'm going to start on my left, my extreme left, and I, I may need some help. I, I see that Sister Ralph has her crew, and um, we want to welcome you. Uh, you are regulars, we haven't seen you in a while. There's a young man that is, anybody who bearing in white is young to me, come. So let me start with the young man right here. Uh, we want to welcome you. Want to say hello and just tell us your name. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Rick Grant here again. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Ralph, you say good morning for your crew. And they could say it themselves. Okay. You put the name on the spot, not me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, church family. Verna Lynn, good my family, Jordan Journey, and my husband, Kervin. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. I'll, I'll go right to Sister Cheryl. I see a young man sitting next to you. Um, <laughs> yes, pass it. We just say good morning. Um, hello. Uh, morning. My name is Nalda Grant. I'm visiting from Faith Christian Fellowship Church Alive in Christ. And I'm on, the here on behalf of Franklin's birthday. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Sister Bass, I see somebody next to you also. I can't see. I left my glasses home. And she has on my colors. Good morning, church. My name is Denise Stevens. Good morning. Welcome, Denise. Welcome. Um, in the, right here in the middle, um, come, um, my brother. We're going to start from all the way in front, right behind of Sister. Yes. Yes, good morning. Welcome. Hi, again. good morning. My name is Shreek Edmir. My name is Sean Fraser. My name is Hashim Fraser. Good morning. My name is Hassani Fraser. Thank you. Beautiful voices. Beautiful voices. Welcome. I see Franklin Weeks Sr. is in the house. So we're glad to see you. Um, right next to Sister Richardson, if you would. There's, there's some. I see a lot of people from First Church here, and we're always so happy to see the people from First Church. Is there anybody want to be acknowledged? If you don't want to be acknowledged, that's fine, but we're happy to see you. We're happy to see you. Blessings on you. Morning, Church. Good morning. Uh, the Walters family, and we're here on behalf of, of uh, Franklin. Uh, we're here to celebrate with him. So. That to be in the house again. We most regular, 
when they say come, we come, and when we tell them come, they come. So we're here as brothers and sisters in Christ. So glad Thank to you. be here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We're going to celebrate Frankie's birthday every other, every other week so that we get people come out. Okay, Frankie? <laughs> in the very last next to Sister Richardson. Sister Richardson, is that your daughter there? Yes, Richards, I'm sorry. Okay, we keep, keep. Good morning, church. That's my sister, Myrtle, and my niece. Um, okay. Chantel, we are here. Also, they are here also with Frankie. Thank so, you. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, let me see. Next to anybody else? Yes, um, um, Sister Richardson. Come, come over on this side. Come over on this side. Yes, yes, yeah, say hello. We listen, we in this church, we love to see people. You know, maybe you could go to another church and they don't want to see you, but we want to see you come every Sunday. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Charles Walter Sr. And I'm here with my um, sister and my oh. nephew. Everyone is here. To celebrate the uh, birthday of Frankie Weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Okay, we're gonna go now to this side over here. Uh, let's see. The, the MS, I see Brother Jeffers, I see Sister Jeffers. I could see that far. Uh, let's see else. Um, Brittany, you have a guess? Yes, I just want to say um, on behalf of Akari, who's next to me, he's not as very vocal as I, but to Brother Bernier, he held his words, so he returned for a second sun Sunday. <laughs> yes, good morning, good morning. Yeah, we, I remember I was here the Sunday he was here, and we were always happy to see him. Yes, good morning, say hello. Good morning, Leona Good morning. Robinson from St. Croix, the WWI director for the district. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Sir Henry, you were here last Sunday? I wasn't here. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, that's true. Good morning. I think I got everybody. Got everybody. We're so happy to, to have you. Oh, up here? Oh, yes, yes. Good morning, Javon. Say hello. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Javon Smith. I am visiting from Wesleyan Church. I am, of course, no stranger here, but I am assisting with Men's Sunday. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Javon. We're so happy to always have you. We want to invite those who are on Zoom or who are watching the service on Facebook to, to come. Um, you know, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good. We hope that you always feel warm and you always draw to, to come on Sundays and worship with us. I want to just tell you quickly, last week I was in St. Lucia. What a beautiful country. I've heard people say that St. Lucia is beautiful and it is. It is a sight to see. But I went on a sad occasion. My, my uncle passed and they asked me to be there. You know, I believe that every word in the Bible that is written is true. I really believe it. And one of the things I was able to witness while I was there was a cremation. I don't know if you, any of you have ever been to a cremation, uh, seen one, but it's a very interesting process. I saw when they brought the body, because they, they brought out the body and they said, well, here's the body. Um, they, they tell us, well, we're going to wrap him up further. He came out in a cardboard box. So all of you who want to get four and three and four story homes, in the end, they put you in this cardboard box, kind of long. And, <laughs> and anyhow, they wrap you up in a cheap, in a cheap cloth. And uh, then come time for the furnace. And so the guy was explaining the process. He said, well, we're going to put you in this, the, the body goes in this furnace and the temperature goes up to like 1500 degrees. And the surprising thing for me, he said, was that even after the temperature goes up for 1500 degrees for two and a half hours, 
sometimes the bodies are not totally consumed. And I was like, then I remember the story in the Bible. Because some people believe, and I've heard, I was reading something recently that the Bible have fairy tales. And I don't believe that. I believe that everything in the Bible is true. So when I heard the body doesn't really be totally consumed, the guy said, we got to wait another two and a half hours to open the furnace um, to process the remains. He says, sometimes flesh has not totally been um, consumed. And then I remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I said to myself, imagine that when people don't believe that this is true, it is actually possible for things to happen that people think is fairy tales. I was reading something about the part in the Red Sea, and somebody made a comment, oh, that's a fairy tale. That's a fairy tale. But let me tell you something. If you look at the sea right now, I was flying to St. Croix a couple of days ago, and between St. Thomas and St. Croix, it was like glass. All the way, it was like glass. I called a friend of mine in St. Kitts, and he said, we have the same situation here. God has the ability to do anything he wants to do, and he can calm that storm. Opening the Red Sea is nothing for our God, who created the universe the sun, the moon, and all of the other stars. God can do anything. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you very much. Everybody's okay? Okay, so we're gonna stand and ask Paps to bless our offering. We're gonna get ready to pick up the offering. Um, ushers, I need two ushers. Could you come up here in front, please? You know we're gonna have one for missionary and one is regular, so. Who the two ushers is today? Okay, so. Brother Vanterpool will be regular offering and Brother Richard will be the missionary. And as we get ready to pick up our offering, could we stand for the blessing of the offering, please. Paps, somebody give Paps a mic for me, please. Paps, Paps. There's only one Paps in here. Hmm? Vantapool is regular, but Richard is missionary. God be the glory. Thank you, Lord, for such opportunity. We give you thanks for the offering. Pray for the blessing, God, that will fall. And we do thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Sons of God arise. It's a melody. Oh 
today so give it all there's a voice that cries out in the silence searching for a heart that will love him longing for a child that will give him their all give it all he wants it all
Thank you. Thank you for such a great job. Well, um, as we get ready to hear a message, it won't be long. I, he promised me it would be short today. But I, can't, I cannot leave up here without saying happy Earth Day to our director, our leader, Sister Jacinth Bonner. I have to, I can't do. She take her time. She could be doing something else other than coming up here. We're listening to us repeating the same thing over to get ready for things. So, Ms. Bonner, I just want to say, I'm going to give you this song. I'm no longer a slave to fear. She is a child of God. Okay? No. <clears throat>
thank you, Sister Jackson, for everything you do and continue doing it, because you know you do it in the name of Lord. Now we'll have our speaker for the day, no stranger, Pastor Leroy Luke. <laughs> Praise the Lord, good morning. Good morning to all of you who are in the sanctuary today. To those of you online, we welcome you. To those who are at home, Sister Peter, Sister Christopher, and the others who may be listening online this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. I just want to read two verses. I wanted to do something more. Probably read the rest of the verses when you go home. But 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, I'll read. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. It says, Watch ye, stand fast in the Lord, quit you like men, be strong. Let all things be done with charity. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you, O oh God, for the men of faith. We thank you for the women of faith. We ask your blessings upon us, O oh God. Help us, the Heavenly Fathers, we seek to know you better. And, O oh God, we will seek your ways. And, O oh God, we will stand firm in the faith without fear or compromise. Bless us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm always reluctant when somebody asks me to give them the scripture for the message for any given day or time. Because I try to listen to what God will have me to say. And I may have a message that I could I have prepared or had in mind all week or all month or something. But even if it's a Sunday morning and I'm going to preach. And God wants me to say something different. I'm going to say it. As a preacher, I don't, I should not be afraid to preach. Preaching has caused many their lives. Jeremiah, we are told, history tells us that because Jeremiah preached to Israel, that he was tied to a tree. And then he was, they used a saw and cut him in two. That's how he died. We are told that John, who wrote the book of Revelations and uh, the gospel, several books of the gospel, that he was boiled in oil and he didn't die. I tell you. So preaching is something that, you know, as we do, it's not to please men. Because if we seek to please men, we would not be servants of God. We would be men pleasers. And so today, I just want to challenge the men of faith. And I said challenge the men of faith, not excluding women. Because I will tell you this, as the Bible tells us, the man is not without the woman. But I am one of those from the old school, Brother, brother Samuel. I believe in role play. And God is, is, is a wise God. He's, he's the all wise God. And when he created man and woman, he gave us distinctive roles, did he not? I, I don't try to compete with my wife. I certainly don't. 
As a matter of fact, if she's cooking and I go to put my mouth and, and to try to describe or something, Brother Samuel, she will let me know this is her domain. And it's not that I can't cook, believe you me, because if I'm hungry, I can cook just about anything. I put everything in the pot and let it cook. <laughs> Amen. It's simple. I don't know why they give themselves so much problem. You peel everything. You put it in. You cover it up. And you sit down. <laughs> I love cooking soup because that's easier to do. I just taught my brother, I don't know if he took the, the method on how to do fungi. Of course, you just cook the stuff and let the, you know, get the, the okra cook nice and you strain it out and then you mix the cornmeal like you do cornmeal porridge and you pour it in the boiling water and you stir and you stir and you stir and you stir. And you stir. And you be patient. You got to exhibit some patience. Because if you stop stirring, what's going to happen? It's going to be lumpy, lumpy, lumpy. And so, you know, we can do a lot of stuff. We can do a lot of stuff. And we are there to help one another. Amen? Amen. We're there to help one another. And so, the message is really entitled, A Call to Duty. Because I believe... There is a specific role for men in society. Don't you think? Come on, be with me. Side with me today, please. There are specific roles for men in society. The role of men in the body of Christ and in society in general cannot be denied. No matter how the feminists and others have tried, men were given the responsibility to lead in the home, the church, and the society. When we fail to play our role, things don't go right. Right now, we are confused in the United States as to the role of men. As a matter of fact, there are those in a certain party that wants to demasculate men. In Chicago, in California, uh, you go to school and, and the teachers, if you uh, declare that you're this way or that way, the teachers don't have to tell the parents. They just take action. Parents have no rights in certain situations. So there is a general effort on the part of one party in particular to demasculate male. They call us names as, as being aggressive and other such things as to describe manhood. But what I've come to recognize in manhood is that a man takes care of his family. Say amen. amen. A man goes out there to work and he comes home and he takes care of his responsibility at home. You know, the Bible said if a man doesn't work, what happened? If a man does not provide for his family, he's what? He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. If it's one thing I can tell you about my dad is that he knew how to work and he knew how to let us work for a living. We had to get up every morning and go out there to take care of the cattle, the sheep, and the goat, and we had no choice. And guess what? When you don't get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and no matter how I look sad or anything, I got to get up. Four o'clock is going to meet me out there taking care of the cattle. We had to milk the cattle. And the truth is, even if I got back late and I got to school late, because I, I, I had to walk from where I live and several miles to get to school. So see me running to school at times trying to get there, because guess what? If I am late, I am going to get what? And plenty leaks too. Well, I tell you, we really, we really need men, you know. You know why some of these young men are so silly and acting so crazy? They needed a man with a whip in their life. Let me say it again. They need a man with a whip in their life. And it's not that women can't do it. 
No, that's not true. Women themselves can take appropriate action to raise men and women in our society that will behave themselves. I used to tell my own boys, I raised three boys. I explained to them what a woman is and I told them that woman come in all color, class and creed. You can go all over the world, could choose whatever you want. I let them understand the reality of life. Because that's what's necessary even in manhood. To make sure that the generation coming after you understand what is the role of a man. And I pray this morning that even as we understand that men are important in our society, as women, you don't think that I'm against you or anything of that sort. We understand that there is a role for us to play. And when we play that role correctly, guess what? Things will go right. Because you see, the school system can only function properly when what the school is getting from the home has learned in the home how to behave themselves. I thank God I'm not a, a school teacher. I, I thank God because I know for sure I couldn't deal with it. Unless I wasn't allowed to take out a big belt and discipline when I had to, I couldn't deal with it. Period. So for the teachers in here, Sister Ralph and Sister Luke and others, God bless you. Let me say it again. Tell them God bless them. Marquis, uh, Marquis, God bless you. God bless you, Marquis. God bless you. Wonderful. Wonderful. But men have a specific responsibility in society and in the church. In the early church, only men were chosen by the apostle uh, to serve as apostles of Christ. Christ chose 12 men. Did you know that? Oh, Lord, help us. Now, you may want to stone me when I'm done, but it's okay. Okay? But Christ chose 12 men. Only men were chosen to, dis to distribute food to widows. In the early church, there was an argument between uh, the widows who were Jewish as opposed to, let me say, Gentiles. They felt there was, so, there was some discrimination and they needed somebody to make sure that the food was well distributed. Because the early church didn't just take money, they took care of the widows in the church. Nowadays, churches just want, many of them tell you, bring your money. But the truth is, the church is responsible for taking care of the widows and those who are in need in the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted somebody to make sure that this situation was resolved. And you know who they got? They didn't get seven women. They got some men, seven men of good report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom to distribute food to the needy. So the truth is we may say there's only certain roles for women. But what God is looking for is men and women who are first and foremost filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom to function in the body of Christ. That is in Acts 6 and verse 3. As men of this church, I want to challenge each of us as we do our part in service to God. To live in a manner pleasing to him. Not leaving everything to the women. Not leaving everything to the women of the church. But doing what we can for the glory of God. Knowing that God first entrusted men. That God first entrusted men with the responsibility of the world. Thank you, sister. Sister Jennings, praise the Lord. So God first entrusted men with the responsibility to lead and to govern from the onset of creation. And the Apostle Paul reminded us that Adam was first formed. There is a reason. 
Then Eve, 1 Timothy 2, verse 13 to 15. The Bible also tells us that Eve was taken out of Adam, Genesis 2, 18, verse 21 and 24. As such, we can say it's a man's world. Oh, some of you feel funny now. Because what do you hear in a lot of these days in society? It's a woman's world. So much so that there is a lot of confusion about who is what and who isn't what. Listen to me. You can't be what God did not create you as. We are who we are just as God created us. Nothing short of that. And God has created the man first as the hierarchy in society. The hierarchy, the high priest in society, in the home, and in the church. Oh, help us, Jesus. We cry and complain because our young boys are doing crazy stuff. Not understanding that it's not the government's responsibility to raise our children. It is the responsibility of the home. It all starts there. And God has ordained. The Bible said, for this cause shall a man do what? Leave his mother and his father and then do what? Cleave to his wife. And what happened? They twain shall be one flesh. And it is in that context that God allows us to raise children. Ladies and gentlemen, there are too many young people or young girls that are not married in our society and raising children by themselves. And that is not the plan of God. Oh, help me, Jesus. Don't get angry with me. You know, I thank God for my mother. <laughs> she used to tell us that, um, you know, why if you have, if you're getting milk free, why do you need to go and buy? Why do you need to go and buy milk if you get it free? These are the things that is important because I, I said to somebody, I told, listen, when I speak to folks who have dedication and stuff like that, I give it to them real. I said, look, I am not the one telling you this. The Bible says marriage is what? Honorable in all. And the bed is what? Undefiled. But you know what God says? Adulterers and who mongers. God will judge. That's what I tell people when I have to tell them about what they need to do in these circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to know that young girls are being taken advantage of or young boys are taken advantage of because I told you I have three boys and two girls and I did not teach them how to take advantage of women or how to allow women to take advantage of them. I showed them what it meant to be a father, to provide for them, to pay for their schooling, to take care of, all of them night and day I try to set a good example for them and that is what fathers are required to do that's what fathers do that's what I said saw my own fathers do did every day he went out to work to make sure that the home was taken care of and I thank God for the commitment he made to do it wasn't perfect but he did what he could as a father to provide for his children let us lead by example, demonstrating to the young men in our church and the world that manhood is not outdated. Can I say that again? Let us lead by example, demonstrating to the young men in our church and the world that manhood is not outdated. We will never surrender to the demands of a world gone mad. As head of our respective homes, we will continue to love, protect, and provide for our families as God has so directed us. We are the protectors and the defenders. I want to tell anybody out there, please, don't come to my yard with any bad intentions. Mm -mm. It's my job to defend my wife and my belongings. Be careful how you come. I'm vicious like a lion. I am the lion when it comes to defense. Huh? 
I'm the lion when it comes to defense and when it comes to taking care. Listen, I, I, you can ask my wife. You can ask my sister-in-law. I am very protective. I don't play. I, I, when it comes to my responsibilities, I, I can walk without stuff to make sure. Because I tell myself, my children didn't ask me to come here. It was me who got them here. And I thank God for them today. God bless you. Bless your name. Bless your name, God. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, I could not be here and they could not be where they are today. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Sister Luke, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As the Bible says, but if any man provide not for his own and specifically, especially, I'm sorry, for his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. First Timothy 5 and verse 8. As head of the home, we will help by the help of the Lord, I'm sorry, we will do our best to provide spiritual guidance to the members of our immediate family and others in our sphere of influence. We will share the gospel on every given opportunity for we are ambassadors for Christ. Knowing that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. God, we commit ourselves as men of this church that we will do those things. We will make sure that we stand steadfast in our faith. We will guide and encourage our young men of this church that they can grow up to be men of honor and courage and commitment who will take care of their wives when they go old and decide to get married. Frankie, when your time comes and you decide to get married, we want you to know the kind of woman to choose. Oh, help us, Jesus. You see, they got to learn these things in the church. Because, Frankie, I can tell you, you won't want some loud mouth person with no respect to bring to mommy. Frankie, say Amen. Amen. So you got to make sure that you know what to look for. You got to have some respect. When you read that Bible, when Jehovah showed up with two angels to Abraham Duos, to Abraham Duo one day, and Abraham at the point perhaps didn't recognize them as who they were. But in that culture, when a stranger come to your house, you did everything to take care of them. And you know, it fascinates me because Abraham looked inside and he just said to Sarah, Sarah, get some flour and bake some Johnny cake for these guests that are here. And she didn't fuss. She went and did what her husband asked her to do. He was not her, um, he was not her dictator. But she understood her role in taking care of her responsibility for, to her husband. And when he spoke in love, she responded in kind. And she left and went and baked those cakes to, for, her, uh, for the guests that were there because it was customary. Today, you dare ask some, some women to do that in our society? Lord, have mercy on you. Lord, I'm not talking about nice Christian people, so you don't even need to feel funny. Don't need to feel bad. If you're not doing it, don't feel bad. <laughs> Some will tell you, are you crazy? Go and do it yourself. Lord, have mercy upon us. But yes, there are distinctive roles for both male and female in our society. There is too many, too much ignorance in our world today. Just too much craziness. And you know what? If, if our children are going to learn and understand how, how men are to conduct themselves, it begins at the home. And we are to understand also that there are real challenges in our society today. We can't give a blind eye in church and pretend that things are not out of control. As members of the body of Christ here at Faith, we'll endeavor to live in unity with our brothers and sisters. Say amen. amen. 
as the Bible reminds us. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. As men of faith, dwelling together means we will find time to fellowship with each other outside of the confines of the church buildings when necessary. Listen, listen. Sometimes we get so churchy that we are, we are almost no good to ourselves. We forget that life is real. And I'm saying to our men here, there are going to come a time when we would have to decide, you know what, we are going out for dinner. Are we are going out for lunch. Let the ladies stay home. Oh, help me, Jesus. They're going to stone me now. It, it, it doesn't, it, 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 there's nothing that's, that, that, that says it can't happen. Because as we talk to each other, as we encourage each other, guess what? We will be the stronger for it. We'll be the better for it. Because I have learned that we can learn from each other. So I pray by the grace of God that the men here of faith will take time in the, in the months or years to come and go and sit together and share together because there's nothing better than when you sit and share in a meal together and share with each other. So if you're going to affect the next generation to come by the grace of God, we have got to be the men that we need to be now. Praise the name of the Lord. So we will seek to edify one another with the word of the Lord, especially as we see the day approaching. Listen, Christ is coming again. I told my wife, listen, there's just something that I can't explain. I tell my wife sometimes when I even look in the skies, it seems as any moment Christ could return. I don't know about you, but this is the way I feel. So I don't sing it, I feel it in my bones. That Christ is coming and he's coming very soon. So as men of faith, we'll never allow, we'll never again allow women or the women of our church to ask the question, where are the men? You have heard it asked. But guess what? But now, by our continued involvement, we will say to them, here we are and here we stand. Oh, hallelujah. For years, you've heard women talk about, we are the men, we are the men. In most churches, am I correct? In most churches, the person who is really up front, apart from the pastors, doing everything are the women. And we are thankful, don't get me wrong, but the time has come when men are going to stand and do what God has called us to do. Beginning with our home, may God help us to start there. Be loving and caring and helpful. And yet when we come out to church, we play our part to the glory of God in giving instruction, in showing to our young men and to our young women what manhood is all about and what, what would be expected in a young woman as she starts her life and career. Oh God, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Men of faith... We are about the only men's organization in the district, I think. And I commend you, Brother Samuel, and all the others. Brother Bernier, I thought about you helping uh, the young boys in terms of the, the, what you do on Saturdays. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank each of you who are playing your role, who are here, Brother Sam and others, and Brother Trevor. Thank you. Continue to do what you do. You're not doing what you do for me because I will not be here uh, all the time. There come a time when my time will come. Listen, the, the time will come when I will have to go. But guess what? When I leave, when I leave, I will want to know that when I stand before God, I would have fought a good fight, finished the course, and have kept the faith. But I pray by the grace of God that this church, the men of this church and the young men coming up, the Frankies and the other young men here will understand that and see an example of what manhood ought to be. Oh, God, help us this morning. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Men, let us continue involving ourselves, serving in the church for the glory of God. And from God will come the blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you gave us some distinctive roles. That doesn't mean, oh God, that others are not valuable. But the words say, I call you young men because you're strong. 
God, we are to be the men that you call us to be. And that means we can be loving because the word says, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And wives, see that you reverence your husband. There are roles to play. It doesn't mean, oh God, that because we're men, we can't go home and cook and do the laundry. All those things are not uh, uh, necessarily for female alone. No, we, we can help in any areas and we thank you. But more so, God, help us to be the spiritual leader as of our home. We have all fallen short in these areas at times, oh God. But we thank you for your grace and for your mercies. God, we ask your continued blessings upon the men right here at Faith. That, oh God, they will continue in their service to God. Right now, we may not have a leader in the men's department, but God, if they allow themselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, I can guarantee, dear God, that things will go fine. So bless their efforts, Lord, and have your way today. We thank you for each of them in Jesus' name. And may the church say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us, let us stand to be dismissed, please. And I'm going to come out last. So in case you want to stone me, I <laughs> praise the Lord. I, I know one person would not allow them to do that. It's, it's my long-time friend and her husband, Sister Ralph. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> uh, could you dismiss us? It's okay? Yes. Come. You can come. Praise the Lord. Don't worry, it's my long-time body. Very long time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we rejoice in the word that we receive today. Heavenly Father, may it not fall on deaf ears, but we take it into practice in our homes and in our community, among our friends, among the relationship among us. Heavenly Father, give the men that are present and the men that are connected to us the strength to take their roles in society. Help us as women to bow out gracefully and support them in every which way because this benefits our generation now and our generations to come heavenly father we thank you that you will give us a favored week bless us protect us and cover each and every one of us as we meet and we congregate again next sunday in your name i pray amen